I'm James Stewart with my Canada Nexus, and we're here at the Van Fleet Science Center at Balboa Park, San Diego. We'll have Professor Mark Van Stone about to step up to the podium to give us a presentation on the science of the Maya 2012. Hi. Thanks for coming. About uh, three years ago, I got really interested in the uh, in the the, the phenomenon that uh, that there is something going to happen in 2012. How many people have heard that something strange is going to happen, <laughs> and that the Maya predicted some sort of end and so forth? Okay. Um, here is a an object which is not Maya, but that is often associated with this uh, stuff. It's called the Sunstone or the Calendar Stone, and um, it originally had uh, paint on it. Looks like looked like this. Yes, could you turn the lights down a little bit? Anyway, this is the the uh, sunstone of the Aztecs. Recently, scholars have deciphered this ring, and this is what it says. <laughs> Okay. The, uh, the calendar of the Maya actually uh, does come to a significant number. The Maya calendar, of course, is not in sync with our calendar any more than the Chinese or the Jewish or the Muslim calendar is. The Maya calendar reaches a number, 13, 0, 0, 0, 0. That's counting the days since their creation. The number 13 is a very significant number for the Maya and for, um, and for most Mesoamerican cultures. Um, to us, it's an unlucky number. To them, it's a very good number. Um, their year was divided into 13 um, segments when the sun moved through the sky, the zodiac. Um, the, uh, the calendar that was sacred had 13 numbers in it. In any case, this picture behind me is, is a good reason on its own to visit Yucatan. It's got the greatest swimming in the world. All the water in Yucatan is underground. All the villages are built next to cenotes, which are these holes in the ground, because there's no, the, the ground is so cracked that um, all the water, uh, that water can't flow on the surface. It always goes underground. So in order to get to water, you have to have a well like this. And the wells have the freshest and most beautiful water in the world. Uh, <coughs> here's what's going to happen in 2012. Uh, the main thing is that the calendar comes to an end. 13 0, 0, 0, 0 is a kind of an end date. At least it was the last time that number was reached. Uh, the Maya uh, day of creation, which happened in 3000 something BC, was called by the Maya 13 0, 0, 0, 0. After that, like a clock hitting midnight, it went to 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 2, counting the days up until today. It's been 5,125 years and some change since that date and now the numbers are 12, 19, 17, something, something and it's almost 13, 0, 0, 0 again. And for that reason and that reason alone, some people have said the Maya felt that this great cycle of 13 baktuns, a baktun is a 400 year period, the cycle of 13 baktuns is a cycle of creation and when this number is reached again, the clock will again hit zero, it'll go back to, go back to zero, I mean it'll hit midnight and there will be an end and a new beginning. Um, it happens that there is no evidence for this belief. <laughs> except for the very single fact that it did happen once. And I will show you others. The return of Quetzalcoatl is something you often hear. Quetzalcoatl, this great uh, feathered serpent god who, who left the Maya, le he sailed away and, and uh, said, uh, I will be back. His birthday is the, uh, the year one read. And the year one read is a significant year. It comes around every 52 years. And in fact, the next one read year is 2039. So if 2012 doesn't like blow you away, then maybe 2039 will. So <laughs> hold your breath. Um, the uh, polar reversal. Some people have talked about a polar reversal. That means essentially, uh, when you look at it, that they feel that the, uh, the, 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 the north pole of the magnetic pole will switch and the south pole will become the north pole and the north pole will become the south pole. This has happened many <laughs> times. You can see in the fossil record that the magnetic poles of the earth have shifted. The last time was about 200,000 years ago. The time before that was only 20 or 30,000 years before that. It's a very erratic event. And so we could be due for another one or it might not happen for another million years. However, people will say 
if the, if the pole does reverse, then we're exposed to cosmic rays, all sorts of things will happen. However, I want to remind you that Homo habilis, our great ancestor chopping tools with the, uh, making tools of stone, uh, several hundred thousand years ago did survive the last polar reversal. So, um, the galactic alignment, this is a, an event where the uh, center of the galaxy, um, the, actually the equator of the galaxy, the Earth and the Sun line up. So the ecliptic is the path of the Sun, the galactic equator goes right through the Milky Way, and indeed the center of the galaxy is a little bit off. Did I hear a question? Anyway, the center of the, the, center of the galaxy is a little bit off, but in fact the ecliptic, the movement of the planets and the Sun, does line up with the center of the galaxy on <coughs> December 21st, 2012. I think that's a coincidence. But, um, and by the way, it also lines up on December 21st, 2011 and December 21st, 2013. <laughs> and it's been happening, um, not precisely in the same spot, but close to the same spot for 25 years. In fact, it actually crossed the galactic equator in 1999 and it's slowly drifting beyond it. And so the sun crosses the galactic equator every single year, and it has since it condensed out of interstellar dust. And it doesn't necessarily mean the end of the, end of the world. It might, but in any case. Um, the transit of Venus, oh did I miss one? Oh yeah, famine, war, pollution. That's the usual reasons for the end of the world. Um, these things are actually gonna happen. These are astronomical events. The uh, galactic alignment, as I mentioned before, where's my, oh, where's my laser pointer? The galactic alignment, um, it will be the winter solstice, the day in which the northern hemisphere has the least amount of uh, sunlight. Um, and it is a solar maximum year. It might happen in 2013, but it's about the same time. A solar maximum is when the sunspot activity is at its maximum, at its highest. When sunspots are at their highest, the sun emits a lot of Where's my button here? Here we go. This is the transit of Venus. I'll, I'll mention this next. First, the transit of Venus, these are photographs taken every two hours of Venus going between Earth and the Sun. That happens every 120 years. And because of the position of Venus and the Earth, it happens twice. And one of the times it'll happen will be in 2012. And the solar maximum looks like this. Cool, huh? Sunspots are storms on the sun, and during a solar maximum year, there are more sunspots than other times of year. It's pretty cool, pretty fantastic. <coughs> and it disrupts cell phone communication. <laughs> and it disrupts, <laughs> it disrupts all, and Twitter, it disrupts all of the communications that go by satellite. And indeed, we are increasingly dependent on satellite communications, and so this year's disruption due to the solar maximum will be worse than ever. It wasn't terribly bad last time. Do you remember any sunspot problems? There was one or two, but not many. And there may be 20 or 30. In any case, sunspot activity does, ha does increase, and it will coincide with that. On the other hand, we have the actual things the Maya tell us is going to happen. And like I said before, one of them is that the long count date is 13000. The date was 13000 back in 3000 something BC. Um, the Chilam Balam is a book written um, that tells the prophecies of every cartoon. A cartoon is a 20 year period and the, the Chilam Balam was written in the 1500s I mean and it was rewritten in the 1700s to accommodate the things that had happened since the conquest. And it happens that the conquest came during a cartoon for a how. Now cartoon for a how means nothing to you probably but what it means to an Amaya is the 20 year period that ends on the day for a how. And we are in a cartoon for a how. And we were in a cartoon for a how when Columbus came. A how. A how means Lord. It basically means Sunday, as in the Lord's Day. Um, but for a how, a, 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 the cartoon that ends in for a how in December of 2012 is presumably going to have the same events as happened in the last time. In fact, the last time we had a for a how cartoon was 1756. And the time before that was 1500. And that was, like I said, the, the conquest, which was not a fun, fun event for the Mesoamericans, right? So that's kind of interesting. However, uh, the only actual ancient monument we have from this period that says something is going to happen on this date is this monument here. This is a close-up of the text. It's called Tortuguero Monument 6. 
And on Torture Guard Monument 6, it says, 